So um, anyway, without uh, further ado, let me introduce the first speaker of today, and that is Anna Fino from Torino, and uh, she will be speaking on balanced metrics and the whole Strominger system. Anna. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to the organizer for uh, the, the kind invitation. It's a pity that I cannot go to, to Montreal, but anyway, we can do this online. Um, so the talk will be about balance and medium metrics. And um, in the first talk, I will review a, a little bit about balance and medium metric property and some example. And then most of the time, I will talk about the whole strumming system and in particular, some solution a construction of solution with generalized the Fouillard solution that I get in joint war with Gio Granchero and Luigi Vezzoni. So let's start. And let's start with the definition, the view of definition of balance metric. So we will work on a complex manifold, complex dimension N, and the medium metric. Here I will confuse the, the, the metric with the fundamental form, the one one form associated to the metric and we will call a medium metric balance if we take the, the wedge product and minus one times of omega, this is closed. That is the same to ask that the omega is our close. So we will have a complex manifold with um, a positive and minus one and minus one form. And the first nice characterization of for a metric, a medium metric to be balanced is due to Gudushan. And then it shows that for any smooth function from M to C, then to, to the, the metric is balanced if and only if, if you apply the, the Laplacian operator with respect to the L, the Laplacian operator with respect to the bar to F, this is exactly equivalent, the same as to apply two times the usual Hodge Laplacian operator to F. And the, the nicer characterization that give us an abstraction to the existence of balance metric on compound manifold is due to Mikkelson. In fact, she showed that if you have a compact complex manifold, that's a means a compatible balance metric, if and only if M is not positive currents of degree one one, which are components of a boundary. That means that you cannot have a T such that T is Ds plus D bar is bar. And this gives a nice construction, maybe the only one, as far as I know, that is known, that if you take a compact complex manifold uh, balance, which is balanced, then it cannot admit any uh, complex compass and manifold of codimension one, which is homologous to zero. Maybe construction that, for instance, you can apply to Calabi Heckman manifold, which remember are just a product of two odd dimensional spheres. And in that case, you can show that with the Calabi Heckman complex structure, you have no balance metric. This Calabi Heckman. A construction will go back later. We will see for the torus bundle in general of K free surfaces. And then again, we will apply for torus bundle over a K free or before. Let's see some example. Now we saw, we saw an example which doesn't admit balance metric, but let's see uh, the, the example of complex manifold admitting balance metric now is quite rich. Um, the one important example is due to Mikkelson independently by Godushan, that they show that if you start with a four dimensional oriented anti cell dual Riemannian manifold and you take the twisted space of that, so that the bundle of orientable compatible all this complex structure on that, that's okay. You have a natural complex structure, but you have also a natural medium metric, which is balanced, which turns out to be balanced. Um, another nice property of a balance metric is, um, is due to a property shown by Alessandrini and Bastanelli 
that in fact they show if you apply to a Keller manifold um, by aeromorphic, or oh, you 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 still get a balance balance matching. That's that's just nice because allow, for instance, to, to construct a nice example of balance metric, like the Morrison manifolds. This, in this case, you just apply, this is bimeromorphic to a compact projective manifold. That means that the algebraic dimension of your complex manifold coincide with the complex dimension, complex manifold. And more generally, you can apply that, the, be meromorphic to a compact Keller manifold. And then in, in this case, you, you, you get what is called the complex manifold in the Fujiki class. So in bo both cases, you get a balance manifold. And then there is a very simple case where easily you can construct a balance compact manifold in this way. Just start with a complex group, which is unimodular, so that means just the trace of the X or the joint representation is zero for any X. And if you take any left invariant metric compatible with the bivariant complex structure, then automatically it's balanced. And then you can easily get what in the literature I call complex parallelizable manifolds, which are just compact quotient of such group by lattice. Another way to construct balance metric is due to Li, Fu, and Yao is just applying. So you start with Calabi Yao free fold, here means Keller Calabi Yao free folds. Later we use Calabi Yao in more general case, just asking that the canonical bundle is trivial. And then you apply a conifold fold transition. That means just that you contract. Okay, uh, let's say the final number of um, disjoint uh, curves, rational curves, and then you get some singular variety with uh, ordinary uh, double point, singular point, and then you just do a smoothing. So you just do a small deformation. And in this way, you, you get a nice natural um, new, Calabi Yao free folds in the sense the canonical bundle is trivia, but it's not anymore Keller. In there, what you get this new complex manifold satisfy the DDC lemma, the Dibal lemma, and this balance. Recently, the, the, there is an, another construction involving the groups, is due to Juicy and Podesta. So they, they start with non compact simple groups of inner type, that means if you construct the, the associate symmetric pair that you can have taking the compact, the maximally compact some manifold, uh, subalgebra there, then that means just that the symmetric pair is of inner type. Um, then they, they admit, if you take any invariant of the structure there, then they admit a balance metric. Of course, you, you have something which is non-compact, but then they show that you, they always have a lattice such that the compact quotient is balanced. This is quite recent. Okay. Um, with um, Geo Granchero and Luigi Pezzoni, we consider the case, we look at the existence of balance metric on this class of homogeneous spaces. Uh, which include, as a special case, the compact real semi-simple groups with the summers of complex structure. What is this family of homogeneous space? So we start with a manifold um, and then we with a complex structure such that, and then an invariant, let's say it's a complex structure and the volume form. So if the real dimension is 2n, we are asking for a non-vanishing to n forms. And what happened here that both the complex structure and the volume form, the two n form are invariant under the action of a transit Euclid groups. And it turns out that the structure of such uh, homogeneous spaces are in fact the total space of principal homogeneous 
complex torus bundle, okay, where the base is just a product of a generalized flat manifold times a complex parallelizable manifold that I mentioned before. So what, what we were able to prove is in fact that the characterization in this sense of well, if M as a balance metric, then automatically the first gen class of such homogeneous space has to be non-zero. And this implies in particular that if you take compare real semi-simple groups with uh, Summerson complex structure, this is well known that they always have a, a, a nice type of let's say a metric metric, which is the pluri, a pluriclose metric. So a DD bar close, they, they, they associate homical CD bar close. In this case, they cannot have any balance metric compatible. So from here, you can see in some sense that the condition to be balanced, and we'll see later, is in some sense transverse to, the, to another condition, on the fundamental form, which is a condition to be the divar closed. I just mentioned very quickly some classification results, only groups. Uh, the first classification result is due to Louis Sugarte, and is in the Nipoten case, Nipoten v algebra, I mentioned six. Uh, then I, I get, I got a classification with uh, Otal and Ugarte. In this case, where which include as a special case the previous one, so we have a solvable unimodular T algebra dimension six, which I made a balance metric, but plus the condition that you have a holomorphy free zero four, so a close free zero four, and then more recently with my student Faradizo, we study this class of example in any dimension, which is uh, the case of almost. Abelian Lie algebra. That means that the Lie algebra is the semi direct sum of this type. H2n is the dimension, the real dimension. And then we find a characterization in terms how is uh, the action of R on this, on this part. In dimension six, we are able to classify this, this Lie algebra. Um, I just mentioned very quickly. The interplay with other type of permitter metric that you can have in the same complex. Before, um, this is uh, a result due to Alexander Ivanov and more recently Dan Popovich who gave a different proof. Um, if you combine the condition to be balanced, so was t omega n minus one zero with the condition to be pluriclose, which or SKT, strong color retorsion, which is the bar omega zero, then what you get, you get killer. So the omega is zero. Uh, with uh, Vezzoni, we conjecture after we check this for many classes of example, that if you have a compact complex manifold, which admits both a balance metric and a pluriclose metric, so the complex structure is fixed. And you just ask that you have compatible with the same complex structure and balance metric and the pluricross metric, then we, we conjecture that is K. And in fact, the conjecture, if you look all known example, even the new one, in fact, this is always true. So that's not a proof. So it's still open, this conjecture. Um, I was just to mention that pluriclose in dimension six, so for n equal to three is a special case of what is called a seno killer case. A seno killer is an option of Hermitian metric introduced by Yoss and Yao, and it's the condition d d bar omega n minus two, zero. So for n equal to three, it coincides with the pluriclose condition. And with uh, Gail Grancero and Luigi Vezzoni, we were able to find, in fact, the compact complex non killer manifold missing a balance and a seno killer. So a seno killer seems to have not the same behavior combined with the balance condition for compact complex manifold. And um, this example that we construct was simply connected just as to five over T2. And independently, there was also a construction 
due to La Torre and Ducarte on mean manifold. And this question to have this uh, type of compact, complex non Keller manifold with two types of Hermitian matrix was posed by Zaklidi, Tuzati, and Gott in relation to um, complex Mon Jamper equation. So let's go to, to the whole summing the system and we'll see first the link with balance. In fact, we conformally balance condition. Um, the, the idea is to generalize in some sense the, what is going on for uh, Calabi Yau manifold in relation to, to Yau theorem to the Calabi conjecture. Okay, so from let's start with the physical motivation. Um, so the idea is to describe the geometry of compactification of a heterotic superstring with torsion to four dimensional. So we Minkowski space time. So we have a link from 10 to four dimension to four dimensional Minkowski space time. And locally, what, what we have is a Lorentzian matrix, Lorentzian manifold, M10, which is a product of let's take as uh, locally as R1 free, Minkowski space time, and the compassing manifold. And the important thing is also to have, let's say, a holomorphic, will be a holomorphic vector bundle, in fact, over M6. And so we have a gauge bundle with a gauge connection. And the idea is to reduce all the questions required by super string theory. In fact, not all of them will see that just part of the uh, physical equation will be covered in this way to the geometry of the six manifold and the gauge one. In particular, what we have that in on M6, we have an SU free structure. Omega, let's say omega is just the, the fundamental form of the Hermitian structure. And big omega is the real part of a free zero form. Okay, satisfy the, the compatibility condition to have an SU free structure. And what will be important is the type of basic structure that you have. And this type is determined by what is called the flops. flops. The, the, which is just given by, in fact, I over two of D minus D bar of omega. So in some sense, it's important this free form, this flux, and why the interest of that? Because the, the first solution, okay, this system was, we will see in a moment, which is the system in general, the first version of the system were found by Candelas, always strumming in Witten in 85. And this is exactly the case when the flux free, flux free compatification. So the, the free form that I wrote before is zero. Um, that means uh, essentially you can distinguish the case where the flux is zero or the flux is non zero by the type of metric that you have on the product, okay? In this case, you have just a product metric. And when the flux is non-zero, you have a warping product metric. So let's go back to the product metric. So in this case, the gauge bundle is that it's just a tangent bundle. And what, what, what happened that M6 is just has to be a Calabi Yau free form with a Keller-Ricci flat metric. And the solution for that it's just a Yau theorem solving the Calabi conjecture. Um, later, as I say, um, Hall and Schrominger independently for formulate the system that you can have in general uh, in the case when the flux is not zero. Okay. Uh, of course, here I forgot another another important thing is not only the flux but also the dilaton that essentially give the say that uh, zero no zero say if uh, the norm or the free zero form is constant or not okay and in the in the case of warping product metric what happens if you look the, the dimension the, uh, the the geometry in dimension six 
the NAM6 has to be calavi alpha-fold in more general case. So not necessarily killer, but with canonical bundle, which is holomorphically trivial. Here we go to the hull from the system. So the formulation is as following. We have a compact three-dimensional complex manifold with a nowhere vanishing holomorphic free zero fold. That means that the time, as I say, is holomorphically trivial canonical bound. So that the condition. And then the other ingredient is to have a complex vector bundle, a cage bundle over M with a medium metric along the fiber. And then we have this constant, which is also called the slow parameter that is involving in the third equation. And that's a, is as a role in distinguish the one case that by the product case, because in the product case, alpha pi is just zero. Okay, and the, what is essentially the whole sum in the system? So you have a system involving a meter metric on M and also involving, let's say the, the, the curvature or the chain connection of the, the of E. So you take a holomorphic structure on E such that you are now using just the chain connection of H, big H, and the condition are the following. The first condition is just a, is just a medium, young me condition. I will go back to this condition. Here, FH, it just means the, the curvature to form of the chain connection with value in end A. So we are taking something value, values in end A. That's why we can take the trace later. Um, the second condition is just a condition here. I am using the norm of the free zero form with respect to the metric omega. And it just, you can see from here that just asking that the, if you do the conform change using this norm, then the U metric is bulk. Okay, so you just have the conformally balanced condition. So that's exactly the link with the balance case. And then we have the more difficult equation, which is the third equation. This is involved in the curvature, the, the curvature of the chain connection associated to H, big H on the holomorphic vector bundle. And then you have another curvature here, R nabla, where nabla is a metric connection on the tangent bundle. So it's a medium connection, in fact, preserve also the complex structure. And here you, you look this R nabla, this time value, values in N E, one zero m, and this is uh, the third equation is the Bianca identity, and it is in fact the more difficult uh, equation to solve or the free uh, equation. Uh, before to go on, just few remarks about this system. Um, the first remark that we can do is that from equation, the whole Strominger system is just a generalization of the rich flat metric on no care Calabia of Falls. That's, you can find that in relation to the solution that I described before by Candelas and so on, coupled with Hermitian Young Mill equation. So you have these two uh, condition and the Hermitian Young Mill equation can be viewed as an extra, let's say condition related to the curvature for a balanced metric or for conformally balanced metric. Um, the median young mean equation that I read before is in fact a geometric condition because it implies that the lomorphic um, bundle, if reducible, that's equivalent to, to the stability for, for this bundle in the sense of geometric invariant theory. Um, this is a show this will show the classical theorem by Donaldson, Hulen, um, and Yao, if uh, you, you're working on Keller manifold. But then it was generalized by Li and Yao 
on um, what is called Gudushon, on complex manifold with a Gudushon matrix. So Gudushon is just a condition that D bar omega n minus one is zero. And if you, if you consider the holomorphic bundle E of degree zero, this condition becomes conformal invariant. So it makes sense also to consider the stability over conformally balanced manifold. Uh, we will use later in more general case in uh, keller before, and uh, we can do that because the type of keller before that we, we, we are using are in fact mild, say we mild singularity. This is the result due to Simpson. Anyway, Calabi-Yau manifold, as we saw, can be viewed as general, a special solution, because in this case, E, the holomorphic bundle is just E10 of M, and we have just had H equal to omega, okay? So as I said before, this, in this case, you, you just ask him by the equation that omega is scalar and the Ricci flat. So uh, we will uh, consider new solution for the Alstroming system when NABLA is in fact the chain connection. That means, uh, I remember that just means that the, the, the one more part of the torsion is vanishing, but it makes sense. One can in principle consider as NABLA any connection in the family of Gudushan connection. So one can consider also other type. Okay. Um, here I just say again, the link with balance. So this is just the condition, as I say, to be conformally balanced. And I want to remark that this is, was not the original way how the equation was written by Hall and Strominger. In fact, it was written in terms of the co-derivative of omega and was Li and Yao that show that is in fact equivalent to write the conformally balanced condition. And so as in Keller case, you are defining, you are considering a cohomology class or one one form, and then you are imposing curvature condition. Here we are considering a class of two, two, four, in fact, and we are, Consider a sort of canonical matrix in, in, in the sense that we are imposing some curvature condition, which involves also the, the let's say, a, a gauge connection on the gauge holomorphic bundle. Okay, so now go to the third equation. Uh, this is the equation that they say already before is the more difficult to solve, couple the two matrix. Um, and from physical point of view, it originated from the Green's large anomaly cancellation um, mechanism. But it's not all, all the story about physics, because what is missing here is what, what in physics is called equation of motion. And yeah, in fact, I will go to this, to this remark that uh, if you want to solve, to have a solution that solve all the equation, so do you want to find a supersymmetric classical solution, then your NABLA is to be herself, the connection in instanton. So the, the curvature has to be of type to zero. And if you wedge, do the wedge with omega square, this is zero. So when we consider the chain connection, which is nice from mathematical point of view, it is not the nicer things from physics point of view. That's what I'm saying. And um, in fact, you have a choice of connection here, NABLA. Can be the chain connection or also the bismuth connection. And the bismuth connection is the right one from physics point of view. And also the physics impose that alpha prime has to be positive. Okay, with alpha prime zero corresponding to the killer case. But from mathematical point of view, from Picard and so on, consider also the case when alpha prime is negative. So also in that case, they, they, they are able to work on that case. Um, before to go 
to the construction before the Fuyao construction and then the generalization. I want just to review known non-killer solution, maybe not the, all of them, um, but of course the first non-killer solution that I will found are the one by Fu and Yao on a class of toric fibrillation over K3 surfaces. Uh, here the connection that is used is the chain connection. And this is the same that we use also later. And then um, the idea is to use a torus fibration over K3 surfaces. And that's that's construction of the complex structure is due to Gonsen and Pruxing and Jujana Ekman construction, in fact. And um, later, no Keller solution were given on Lee groups and the compact quotient only group by lattices. Um, the first case was considered by Fernandez, Ivano, Ugarte, and Villa Campa, and was when Nabla, in this case, is the Bismuth connection. Also, Grancher independently considered this case. And the example was just S1 times the real Eisenberg of dimension, real dimension five over gamma. And Fei and Yao consider also the nice case where Nabla is any connection in the Gudushon uh, family of Hermitian connection, distinguished by the torsion. And in this case, the case they consider is a compact portion of a complex group of a gamma. And then more recently, Mario Garcia Fernandez find, found new solution on non-killer torus fibrillation over K3 surfaces. And he found the first example to a solution of the astronomic system. So it's quite nice. We can see standard also in this case. And Fei, Wang, and Picard found the solution on this type of fibrillation. So you have non-killer fibrillation from six dimensional to Sigma, where sigma is just a comparing of surfaces of genus bigger than or equal than three, and the fiber is a copper hyperkeller manifold. That's also a, a, a nice construction. So before to go to, to, to our construction, let's review the construction of constant proscreen that we use also for when the base is K or before instead of K surfaces, K3 or before. Okay, so let's start with K3 surfaces and let's denote with omega S reach a flat killer metric on that. Um, then if we consider any pair of anti cell dual 114 on the K3 surfaces such that the class is integer. Here I should use one over two pi, probably, but I will omit that. Um, Golsen and Prushkin associate in a natural way a toric fibrillation. Oh, you just consider connection one form, theta one and theta two, such that the differential of t, theta i is the pullback of the one one four omega i. And then you can define on this toric total space of the toric vibration, a natural holomorphic free zero form, nowhere vanishing holomorphic free zero form. Oh, you take theta and you wedge with the pullback, this omega S here, just the two zero form, holomorphic two zero form on S, okay? So you just do this, oh, sorry. I did something wrong. This is something that I don't have to push. Okay, sorry. Okay, I don't have to push that. Okay. Um, so what what we have now in a natural way, one can construct a balance metric, just like the pullback of the Keller flat metric omega s 
on the K free surfaces, and then you are just theta with theta bar. This is balance. And then the tricky by Fu and Yao, um, the main tricky is to try to, to modify, to use this on sats for the metric. So you use U, a scalar function, and you are looking for, let's say, scalar function U for which omega U, which is just given. So that the part corresponding to theta with theta bar, you don't modify, and you just multiply the, the killer form on the K-free surfaces by the exponential of U, and you pull back. And of course, you need to find something that satisfies all the conditions. So you start from a, a holomorphic bundle, degree zero on your K-free surface, and by pull back, you go to the total space. And what, what they show, when Yao, that the high strumming system reduces, in fact, to a two-dimensional complex margin pair equation, of this type involving a function u, um, involving function, a known function, positive known function that is involving essentially in this condition, the electricity condition that is just a condition that omega u is positive. So you really have a, a money metric. And mu is a two to four with integral zero, with average zero. Um, so what we use later that this is how the, the idea is, is going on, that in fact here, the, the only thing that is involved is, is in fact, you have a sort of transversal Calabi Yao foliation. So that's, that everything is more or less um, working by when you reduce this motion per equation and so on, because you have a foliation. We, I, I will explain a little bit this later. And before to see how we send, I want to say, I want to just say that a different proof of Fu Yao non killer solution was given by Fong, Picard, and Zhang remarking, showing that the solution of the hull storming system can be viewed as a stationary point of what they call an, an anomaly flow. So you have a couple flow. So, so you evolve omega in this way, and you evolve also the metric HT in this way. Um, this is also what is called Donaldson heat flow, in fact. And they show that they conformally balance, they start with conformally balanced condition and that's preserved along the flow. And they show short time systems at unison. So that's another way to, 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 to show, in fact, uh, to give a new proof of Fu Yao non killer solution. Okay, so let's give the first result, which is an extension to torus bundle of LK3 arbifold. So what we show with Grancher and Vezzoni is the following. So let's start with a compact K3 R before with a each flat killer form, omega s. And uh, so put less than all to buy ES, the R before and remember. So let's consider two one one form, which are on this dual of S, such that again the class is just integer or as an R before. Uh, in the orbifold cohomology. And um, that's allow us to apply the, the chern uh, theory, also in this case. So we have, we, we, we can construct a principal T2 uh -huh. orbifold bundle in this case, which is determined by them. And we suppose, so suppose that this is smooth, the T2 orbifold bundle. Then if we consider a stable vector bundle, or degree zero over our RP fold, such that you can see this, this condition is a exactly the condition that the insurance when you take the pullback of everything and you take the metric omega u with the same ansatz like the one using by uh, Fu and Yao, you get a solution of the Alstroming system. And you can see for me uh, that's, it's exactly the same equation like the one used by Fuenyao 
if we now just use here 24, that was just the LN number for the K-free surfaces. Of course, here, the, 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 the difficult part is, okay, the first thing, the, the first part is more or less, me, 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 let's say just generalization, what is going on for K-free surfaces. And the more difficult part is the analytic part. So to, to again, we will get some equation. And so to, to show that the equation has some solution, and then we will use some, some result by Ikachimi because the type of uh, equation that we get is what is called transversal elliptic equation. And also another difficult is of course, construct um, the right bundle on the, the K free hard before that give a solution by pullback. So degree zero holomorphic bundles are defined in this, some sense, this equation. So here I give a sketch of the proof. So uh, the first Anna, part, Anna, oh, the, the, uh, sorry. Carl has a question. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I, I didn't see, yes. Claude has Please. a question. It's written in the, in the, Chat. No, no, he's in person. Ah, okay, okay, that's good. Sorry, I didn't hear the the there the was a question. I see. Maybe this, the microphone you gave me. Uh, the, the question is, what's the definition of a K3 orbifold? Is it K3 over a group, or is it a, a, a orbifold degeneration of K3, or what? No, 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 K3 just uh, the distinction, K3 orbifold you mean? Yes, what is the definition of a K3 orbifold in your, in your result? It's the same as K3 surfaces, but in the, in, in the, in, 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 in the class of orbifold. So cano canonical bundle trivial and so on. Could we uh, automatically as a Ricci simply connect uh, the, 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 as, a can, as a canon, let's say as always, a rich flat um, Keller metric. I don't know if I answered to your question. Well, no. I, we will see later an explicit example of such surf or before surfaces. So for example, there are lots of, of, uh, of hyper Taylor uh, orbifold. Exactly, 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 exactly. Yes, yes. Um, I think Jan and Flesher uh, have a list, full list of such type of K3 or before. I hope that they answer to your question. So for example, we, will, we'll, we will apply this, um, this in explicit example to, to get the example. Okay. So the first, let's start with a connection one form with the property that d theta i is just a pullback of omega i. Um, then the smooth T2 bundle determined by omega i, as we saw before, is a complex structure, okay? So the one zero form is just given by theta one plus i theta two and makes the, the projection holomorphic projection. Um, so, what, what is the condition now for the Hermitian metric to be balanced? So, we take omega like the pullback of uh, the, the Keller form on the orb before plus theta one with theta two. And the condition to be balanced is equivalent to the trace, to us to the trace of omega one and omega two with respect to the metric on the K3 hard before to be zero. And in particular, if omega one and omega two are harmonic, then this is equivalent to the, this topological condition. So the cut product of the class corresponding to omega one and omega two with the class of omega S is zero. And then, okay, if we have a holomorphic to zero form on S, we call some norm, then we can just take omega s wedge theta and that give a holomorphic 304 
on the total space, on the total bundle, we cost a norm with respect to omega. And then we can use the same as subs of this type. So the function u is involved. And what happened here, if we have a stable bundle on the k3 or before we respect, of course, the stability is depending on the choice of the killer form that they choose now on the, the base. And the stable bundle is of degree zero and one has an emitting young mean metric and let's denote with FH, the curvature, then just the pullback, you get the stable bundle of degree zero on M with respect to omega U, the new metric that we bondify with Hermitian young mean metric just given by the pullback and the curvature is the pullback. Uh, so everything until here is more or less the same. And here, the, the, the idea is to use that, in fact, the argument by Fu and Yao depends only on the foliated structure of the manifold. So we will see in a moment that, in fact, you have a Riemannian foliation with uh, transversally, which is, let's say, transversally calabitao. So the, the uh, transversal holonomy of the holonomy of the transverse, let's say, Levichita connection is contained in a Sufi. How is defined this foliation? Let's consider zeta, the dual to theta, okay? To the one zero four with respect to the metric. So the foliation is generated by the real part of zeta and the imaginary part of zeta. And if you take theta, and then we, you, we take just a pullback of the killer form, and the pullback of the two zero form. These are both basic, in fact, with respect to the um, foliation that we consider. And we, we can show that, in fact, omega b, small omega b, and big omega b induce a transverse Calabi-Yau structure on M. And then the, the, the analytical part here is involved now because we can reduce the also in the system to a transversal elliptic equation. And that's exactly the type of generalization of Fuyao theorem that we got for medium free folds with a transfer Calabi Yau structure. So it's a little bit more general what we show Fuyao. And now the analytic part is, of course, to solve such transversal elliptic equation. And this is done using a result of a Tachini that is involving. Um, Elitic, transversal elliptic operator. So now I explain how to get explicit example because until now we don't have example we have theory. Um, so the, the way how we got to this example, of course, is to start with S, which is a type of killer R before, but not so bad. We will see that we'll have mild singularity. And then the first thing is to consider Safer S1 bundle, I will review a little bit theory about that. Safer S1 bundle, which is smooth. So this is the first step. Safer S1 bundle, which is smooth. And then again, another S1 bundle, which is just a regular principle, S1 bundle over M1. So in particular, what we will need, we will need on S two rational divisor which are independent over Q and that allow to construct this sequence of, let's say, first S1, say for S1 bundle, and then, which is smooth, we, we need something which is smooth, and then again, another S1 bundle. That's the idea. So uh, I will explain both how we get non-simply connected example, and then also the simply connected one. Okay, uh, just here I will be very quickly, uh, and maybe not so precise, but for the speaker, I think Charles Boyer can, <laughs> is much more expert than me because he uses quite a lot with Galiski for Sazaki and Samani. Anyway, and what I mean for safer fiber manifold, I just mean a manifold dimension 2n plus 1 with locally a free S1 action. 
for which the S1 foliation has an orbit for this space. So in practice, you have a differential map from L, from your, let's say, safer fiber manifold to an X, which is a complex and such that every fiber is a cycle. So here it's just really roughly speaker, so I you know, not define that. But the natural setting where one can study these safer bundles is when the base X is complex locally cyclic, or oh, there is a misprint here, or before. So locally it looks like a quotient of CN over some cyclic group, which acts linearly. So the main idea is the following. So there is here an divisor that is in union of vial division on, on X, such that the, the, the previous map, let's say total space, is a circle bundle over X, removing this union of divisors outside the singular point, let's say. And then you have a natural multiplicity, MI, are assigned to the fiber over each di because in fact this s1 bundle is coming from from c star from an action of c star in fact and on any fiber the action of c star let's say on any on corresponding di this device of di corresponds something to the action of c star on the quotient of c star over the the, the roots of unity Right, and that's exactly correspond to the multiplicity. This is really roughly speaker, but what is important here that using this multiplicity and using this divisor, you, you have what is called the Q divisor, which is the branch divisor of X. And this is a quite nice result by color that everything is determined the, the safer as one bundle. If you start with X, with such co-divisor, the branch divisor, such that the, the H1 hard before is trivial, then an S, a safer S1 bundle over X is just uniquely determined by what is called the first chain class. So everything is here, is just I just use the, the Poincare dual of the divisor or the by divisor. Okay, with this notation. So everything is determined by what? By MI, this is the starting point, and then some integer, which are relative prime to MI, this BI, which are involved here, and then this Y divisor. So that's why we need some rational divisor to determine the cipher as one bundle. And of course, what, what is important is to have some smooth cipher. S1 bundle. So that's an explicit example of what we, we consider this intersection, for instance, of two degree six hypersurfaces on the weighted projective space, two, 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 three, three, in generic position. And what is important, we use quite a lot that this um, K3 R before S9 isolated singularity of a one type in Duval, so it means the, the, the corresponding uh, finite group is a copy of zeta two, and the, the orbifold fundamental group is trivial. That's quite important for the construction. So what, what we did is to blind, blowing up S at nine minus K points, K between two, one and eight. So we are just using partial resolution and then in this way, choosing a um, suitable uh, divisor, we can construct a smooth safer as one bundle. This is the first step. And then we apply the main theorem. This is uh, the, the case of for non simply connecting. We apply the main theorem to the proud of just of this M1 times S1 to obtain a solution of the al stroming system. Of course, the, 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 the difficult part here is also to identify this M1. And we can identify this M1 using Barton result and Kohler result for simply connected phi manifold. We have a phi manifold, which is a simply connected, which has a semi-free S1 action. And using essentially the topology, we can show that M is in fact diffeomorphic to our M 
is just isomorphic to the product of S1 because M1 is just isomorphic to the connected sum of K copy of S2 times S3. And how changing this K is determined essentially by the orbifold second Betty number of the surface. That's the no simple connected case, but we can get also simple connected case. The construction is similar. So what we do, we consider the blow up of S of the same K free or before that I described before at K bigger than or equal to two or singular point. And then the idea is to construct two independence over Q divisor, rational divisor, D1 and D2. Okay, where the first step corresponds to the one has to be as safer as one bundle, smooth, okay? Um, and then as smooth as one bundle over that in such a way that the final result will be simply connected. And in fact, what we know again, we can identify and tilt the one by a color result as connected sum of K copy of S2 times three. And then since M tilde is simply connected in six manifold, you have a free S1 action. And the second, the, the W2, let's say, is of M tilde is zero. Then M tilde is not torsion in the cohomology. That's the important thing to not to have torsion in the cohomology because allow us to identify what is M tilde. And then tilde is diffomorphic to the connected sum of R copy of S2 times S4, R plus one copy of S3 cross S4. And there again is completely determined by the cohomology, by the rank of a 2 SQ in this way. So summarizing what we show, we show the following that for any K between 13 and 22, and for any R between 14 and 22, that's determined by the, essentially by the second Betty number, let's say. On the smooth manifold, the first one, which is non-simply connected, and the second one, which is simply connected, there are complex structure with trivial canonical bundle, which admits a balance metric and the solution of the answer of the system. Of course, by construction, the starting point, so K equal to 22 and R equal to 22, correspond exactly to the full Yao solution. So that's in, in, in this sense, a generalization. I end with last remark. The, if you look at this manifold with R equal to one, this type of manifold, simply connected manifold was also considered by a fine and pan of, they consider a complex structure with um, a three C star action. So uh, would be nice maybe to see also for that type of structure since the, the canonical bundle is also homomorphically trivial in that way to see if you can find solution for the Alstroming system. I think I am on. It's good to finish here. Thank you very much for, for the attention. Thank you. Good, so uh, let's thank uh, Anna for a beautiful talk, uh, either uh, remotely or uh, by uh, clapping. Um, okay, are there any questions? Uh, I have a comment. Yes. Maybe I did something wrong, could be. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was very nice, Anna, very good. Uh, I just have a comment about uh, the K3 orbifolds. Mm -hmm. there, there are a whole lot of K3 orbifolds. Uh, they're listed in an appendix in my book with Chris Galitsky. Okay, uh, okay. So, and they, they, they all have the crepit res resolutions will be the normal, the usual uh, K3 orbifold. They're all given by the ones, I think it's due to Miles Reed, the, uh, their hypersurfaces in weighted projective space. 
And I you can see. get a, you I can see. get a lot more by using complete intersections and so forth. But there is an appendix in in my book about these uh, about the hypersurface. Okay, uh, I, I will look. I will look. I am sorry. I am not so expert in algebra geometry. So <laughs> yeah, <but I> hope... <laughs> maybe Geo is more expert than me. But <laughs> it's in audience. Yes. So I will look. I will. Thank you very much. You I think there are other questions in the class. So uh, uh, maybe uh, Charles would answer the question, what's the definition of a K3 orbifold here? Yeah, the, the definition of a K3 orbifold is that the canonical sheaf is trivial. It's trivial. In, in the right dimension, of course, we're, we're, we're talking about surfaces. Okay, and the and Anna uh, used the term blowing up, but I believe that she meant take crepit resolution. Is that right? The blow ups in your talk were actually crepit. Resolution? Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I can hear very the the sound is coming very far. So yes. We call them blow ups because the, uh, an ordinary blow up is in of a, of a surface is not a crepit. I mean, it changes the the canonical sheet. So. But here, what you're doing is uh, you're, you're taking a crepant, crepant resolution. Of yeah, the, the, the resolution remains crepant. I mean, what, with the blow up, you, you get the, the canonical bundle remain trivial. Thanks. May I mention something too? Yes, no. yes, Gail, please. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. We do use blow ups because they are precisely crepant resolutions, actually. Yes. And um, we used um, not just Maus Reed list, but the list of his students, Jan Fletcher, and I think somebody else, which are like complete intersections, not just the hypersurfaces. And this example in particular is from uh, Jan Fletcher's list. The, one with nine A1 singularities. Uh, there are other examples there, and um, well, we just wasn't were not quite sure how the crepant resolution will impact the analysis in general, and we used, in a certain sense, the simplest possible example there. I and mean, then there was a question at some point how to construct actually this stable bundle over such, yes, yes over such um, orbifolds. So we had to work additionally and use like set construction analog in the orbifold case. Okay. Anna? Yes. Yeah, it's Ilka. I have a very nice question. Um, yes. <laughs> and um, any focus on the situation when you choose the Bismuth connection instead? Uh, I, I understood only the first part. Any? Any progress when you take the Bismuth connection instead? Do you know anything? Instead of Jan connection. Mm. This I don't know. Maybe it's a good, it's good to think. Uh, can I say also that um, in these particular examples, the bismuth connection cannot work because um, the corresponding equations, um, they have already vertical part. I mean, it's not like one single uh, hard, but nice looking motion per type equation. So in, for these particular examples, it doesn't seem probable that bismuth connection can work. And uh, I don't know examples where the bismuth or the connection with opposite of bismuth torsion actually uh, may work. And I think this is what um, in physics actually is important. Yes. The, 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 the example by by Yao on a complex, on compact portion of complex group, as far as I remember, was for any, for any good show connection, right? But maybe what's trivial 
they consider, I think, trivially the third equation. I don't remember, but I think they consider all the family of connection in that case for the case of a compact quotient of complex group okay. that I mentioned. I think in that case, they consider also the bismuth connection, as far as I remember. But um, of course, they were not, were not constructing in this way. So we're not um, torus bundle over something which is scalar. Hi, Anna, can you hear me? Yes. This is Marco, I have a question. Yes. Uh, when you were um, uh, searching for these examples uh, by using this construction, mm -hmm. uh, porous bundles over uh, blow-ups of K3 surfaces, you, you have a very large um, number of parameters that you can choose. I'm just wondering what happens if, what happens if the uh, parameters are, uh, sorry, my question is the go the um, the balanced condition. What, mm -hmm. what does the, what kind of constraint does that place on the parameters? And are there other parameters that are not go uh, that are not uh, balanced? Ah, you mean uh, with when you look the, the the I mean the balance. Of course, you you start with balance. Manifold and what you are asking that, but you, your you your question is related still to the um, to the Hall Schrödinger system, right? The, the the third equation of the Hall Schrödinger system. I'm just wondering uh, some of the tissue bundles that they're these singular surfaces. Mm -hmm. Balance condition, right? Ah, if you can change the connection from the chern connection to other type of connection, this is what you are wondering. No, I, I'm wondering if um, you encountered examples in mm -hmm. where you could construct them in the same way uh, as bundles over orbital K3. Ah, okay. This I don't know. Maybe Gayo knows, but I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't know. I think maybe it's... In general, yes. Uh, the balance condition is a uh, topological condition on the churn classes of the toric bundle. If those conditions are not satisfied, then is there a natural metric? In general, you can describe the metric, the, the natural meter metric on torus bundle over Keller manifold and then impose the balance condition. So it's... To have balance is not so... so there hard. are... There are um, choices of these virtual classes of the bundles mm -hmm. for which, for example, the metric could be pluriclosed. Yeah, there pluri different you can structures. Yes. Okay, thanks. But I think if you start with killer down, you, yeah, as you say, you just have topological condition to a balance. Yes. Sorry, I can hear very little when you you ask in the room. So it's hard to understand the question. Okay, uh, are there any other questions from the audience? I think we're done here. Hmm? Okay, uh, in that case, maybe we should thank Anna again. Um, thank you very much. And uh, there's coffee, uh, at least uh, for the people who are yes. uh, in my virtual coffee. <laughs> yes. So um, please come back at uh, 10.30. Uh, the next talk is by Jason Lotte.